Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do an orchid update. Well, it's going to be more than an orchid update. It is going to sh I'm going to show you all of my orchids. I guess it's an update. Usually I only show a couple of things. Today I just wanted to uh, do everything. Uh, so it might be a little bit longer of a video. Hopefully not. We'll touch on each one. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been asked a lot to do orchids. And I really have lost the luster for orchids. My, my heart isn't in them anymore. Um, I still enjoy growing some, but not what I used to. I used to have a lot. Well, <laughs> after I brought them all to the table here, I have a lot. Um, not as many as some of you, but I, I still have quite a bit. I thought I might have had maybe 10 or 12, but I don't. Uh, let's do a quick count. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18, so I was close. Uh, but when you put them all together, they just seem like a lot. So, uh, orchids have been a struggle for me recently, well not recently, over the past uh, number of years, I'm going to say three or four years, and uh, I've had a, a series of pest problems, I've had mealybugs, I've had scale, I've had uh, spider mites, I've had uh, thrips, I've had all kinds of things, and when it comes to growing orchids, uh, they're so, I'm going to say unforgiving, when it comes to uh, regrowth. So with other plants, you get a pest, uh, you lose a couple of leaves, or you lose a section of the plant, and then within a year, it kind of bounces back after you've uh, dealt with the problem. But with orchids, they take uh, a year, usually, to create one new piece, so like a new pseudobulb, or if you're lucky, you get two, and or a new leaf, or something. And if you have mealybugs, and you think that you've gotten them all under control, like with a phalaenopsis, uh, I found that when my Phalaenopsis would go into spike, and they go into spike at least once a year for me, uh, well, with the, the common ones, uh, and, and uh, they'd come into bloom, and then all of a sudden, as the blooms are starting to open, I notice that they're covered in, in, in mealybug, and I'm like, oh my god. So, I, I waited a year for the plant to bloom, and then within a week, all of the buds are blasting because uh, I didn't notice the mealybug right away, and uh, but the plant itself throughout the year looked clear, free and clear. So it just very frustrating. And because it's such a, a long recoup time for for orchids, um, I just I've I've slowly just composted a lot. So um, I don't want these bugs in my life, and uh, I don't want a plant that when it does get bombarded, and you you treat it, it's not going to take several years for it to become beautiful again. Uh, I have way too many plants to, to worry about that uh, I, I just don't want that around me. It's, it's very negative. Once you start to, to feel that decline, you kind of don't want to go in the grow room anymore. So I want to I wanna increase my, my plants that, that I, I, I have fun around, I, I enjoy, to, to pull me down into the grow space. I want to come and see what's new. With orchids, there's always something new, and when you see that new bit of growth, you get so excited. So anyway, I'm rambling. I'm sure many of you have, have dealt with that sort of issue and uh, understand completely what I'm saying. But you guys are diehard, so <laughs> you're better than me. So this is a, um, a discount one that I got from Clouds Orchid, which is a, uh, an online seller uh, in Canada. And uh, this is a beautiful one. I think I got it for $5. It was in their little discount bin a few years ago. And uh, this is what happens when I keep orchids on my, my window ledge up in the kitchen where it's close to a watering source and in a good spot. Um, it gets lots of blooms because uh, it gets a temperature fluctuation at night uh, in the fall and in the spring so it always produces spikes and uh, the aerial roots are doing beautifully uh, because it's there. I'm looking at it when I'm doing my dishes. When I'm done doing dishes if I notice that they're a little bit too silvery I throw it under the water uh, give it a drink and then and then put it on the counter to dry and then put it back up in the window ledge. So uh, yeah, so that's what I get when I when I grow things where I can see them. Uh, so that's that's a good thing. But look at all the beautiful blooms. I like to keep my uh, my bloom spikes on my fowls natural. Uh, sometimes with the bigger ones, I will stake it up. But uh, usually I I let them do what they do, and I think that that's really really beautiful. I love the sprays of blooms. And this one's super cute, and I can't believe I only got this for $5. And the roots are doing beautifully. It's only in a tiny little pot with, uh, with sphagnum moss. Um, I'll have to repot that eventually, but really, it's not necessary. These roots are doing just fine. I keep them watered, and uh, this plant will be happy for quite a while. 
So I'll put this off to the side. Hopefully I don't break anything. It's very like me to break things. <laughs> i got so much stuff on this table right now because of all the orchids. Okay, what are we going to do next? Next one is another Phalaenopsis. This one was also from upstairs. I just moved it upstairs because it started developing a flower spike. This one is my Phal... Uh, uh, wagon... Wag... Uh, I don't know. It's got the pink flower. Uh, W-I-G-A-N-I-A-E. Uh, maybe if I remember I'll put it down below. Uh, it's going to have a beautiful pink flower. It's got a lovely variegated leaf. Uh, it's super pretty. Uh, this one has been uh, a one that's been plagued with mealybugs in the past. Uh, it's completely clear at this moment. Uh, I actually put it downstairs because of its, uh, its issue. I didn't want to get anything else uh, infected. And it was actually on uh, a hospital shelf last year. And, uh, and I was spraying it all the time. I was, I was really going to it because I really think that this is a beautiful orchid. Uh, so I want it to get bigger, the leaves will get longer, and the sprays will get more and more magnificent as it ages. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. For now it's going to stay on the window ledge, and I can, I can look after the roots a little bit more. This was downstairs uh, until a couple of weeks ago, so uh, the roots are just going to start coming, uh, becoming nicer and nicer. Uh, they're a little bit emaciated there now. Um, but yeah, soon it will look much better. And bloom. <laughs> Move this off to the side. Another one that excites me right now is this. It's a Lycasti uh, Aromatica, I think. So I think that this one will smell like cinnamon. I bought this one a few a few years ago, and it's been in the same pot. I need to repot it because I'm noticing that the uh, the media is, is uh, decomposing. Uh, but look at the 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 jump in the pseudo bulb uh, since the last time. I've got a bit of scale right there. I just wiped it off with my finger. Uh, the pseudo bulbs are there. It's got three from the past and they're all kind of tiny and then we got this beautiful jump. So hopefully next year I'll get a, a bloom on this one. Uh, usually this plant uh, goes dormant and, uh, and there's no leaves on it at this time of year but uh, it seems to have survived the winter just fine. The leaves are starting to go a little bit yellow but uh, yeah I'm letting it do its thing. Hopefully we get another nice big pseudo bulb this, this uh, summer. I put it outside in the summertime and it loves it. Um, it gets lots of water, it gets lots of fertilizer. I hook the fertilizer right up to the hose and I just spray everything. It really loves it. So that was a Lycasti. Another fowl to stay on the fowls. This is a species fowl. Uh, this is a fowl, Phalaenopsis palins, I believe. And this one has cakeys on it. And just looking at it now... I don't know whether you're able to see, but there's, it looks like a little flower spike coming on this cakey. So it's, uh, it's doing something. Uh, this is product of being down in the basement, and I don't mist things as much as I do upstairs. So the aerial roots dry out, uh, so I need to uh, pay more attention to that. I actually changed how I'm watering in the basement. I now got one of those um, expandable hoses, so it does 50 feet, but, but uh, when it's not pressurized, it, it collapses down smaller. So I found that, that to be really, really useful. I've had it for a couple of weeks. It's allowing me to water my plants in less time, and uh, what does it do? It, it, um, it helps me stay focused, because I go from plant to plant to plant to plant, uh, rather than um, going watering can uh, to each plant, and then going back to the sink to fill it up, come back. I get sidetracked by shiny things, and I forget whole shelves. So sometimes, because I come down usually once a week, sometimes twice a week, to water, and uh, if, if something's not interesting on that shelf, I might not water it. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's my bad, but because it's going to take me much less time to, uh, to do my thing, I think that plants are going to uh, either love it or hate it, because some things don't want to be watered as much. So I've got to really pay attention to what I'm doing, um, because inside things generally don't need as much water, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll play it by ear, see how it goes, and I want to get a little misting attachment for my, for my hose so that I can go in and just mist some of my orchid roots, uh, instead of just doing the, um, the water breaker on the pots. So, but all in all, it'll keep the humidity up a little bit more because I'm watering a little bit more, because it doesn't take me as long. So anyway, that was another Phalaenopsis. Uh, what else could I do? 
Next, I thought that this one was a goner. This one was my, uh, or is, my uh, Oncidium Twinkle. Uh, it it did beautifully for years. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm coming, I'm, I, I had a cold, so <laughs> don't mind me. I've, my throat is icky. Uh, so it's it's super cute. I love the little pseudo bulbs in there. This is one of the Oncidiums that, that actually grows well for me. Many Oncidiums grow up uh, and then get all kinds of aerial roots and, and kind of like... Um, this guy, the Maxillaria, uh, what one is this one, Maxillaria, oh, I forget now, <laughs> Variabilis, I believe it's Variabilis, uh, <clears throat> the, way that, the way that it grows is it grows on a little stem, and then you get a bulb on top of a bulb, on top of a bulb, on top of a bulb, this one is, is well suited for it because the roots go down the base and then, and then down into the pot, so it, it's better. But when you're dealing with other types of Oncidium, they just get all kinds of aerial roots. And you try to repot it. You can't repot it deeper because you got a darn bulb uh, lower down. So if you pot it lower down, it'll rot that bulb and it's just a whole situation. So I, I try to stay away from, from Oncidiums because they don't do well for me. <laughs> um, but if I missed a little bit more, if I grew them outside, Oncidiums would be beautiful. Because I just put it on the mist and, and, uh, and all the roots are happy. Happy as clams. Here's another um, species Phalaenopsis. This one's uh, uh, Phalaenopsis hieroglyphica. I've had this for a few years. It hasn't done anything. Uh, it gets uh, new roots occasionally, uh, but the leaves just stay the same. Um, hopefully, in time, it will start blooming for me. I'm really, <laughs> I really love the blooms, but uh, yeah, so far it has done nothing. So it just kind of stays at the back of the shelf. In the summertime, it does beautifully. It puts out new growth. In the wintertime, it doesn't do anything because, uh, as you can see, it needs more water. But this one is so big and, and heavy that uh, it tips over, so I can't put this on the, on the window ledge in the kitchen because it will just keep falling off and breaking itself. Uh, so it stays back here. Usually it's kind of laying on its side. Orchids don't mind laying on their sides. It stops uh, water from pooling in the central uh, leaf, uh, so it, it kind of prevents um, uh, crown rot. Uh, move that over. Next thing we got here, uh, it's a dendrobium of sorts. It's a uh, zip cross zondi, uh, X gran granfiflorum. Granf I don't know. <laughs> Me and Latin names. Uh, so this one has had uh, problems with thrip. I've I've never had it rebloom, and uh, uh, this den I don't think requires a uh, a winter dormancy like. Um, like a nobly type, so this is just solely my care. It's it's not blooming. It produces cakeys like crazy. So I got all kinds of little babies with little aerial roots growing off to the sides. Uh, they don't do very well because I don't have the misting thing going on, so they just dry up. Um, but uh, if I get that misting attachment, that should help out. Just give them a little bit of a blast once a week or twice a week, and they should be fine. But this one has had thrips like crazy. And, uh, and I believe spider mites in the past. So hopefully um, things work their way out. And as you can see, we've got that silvering. Uh, there's like, uh, it, it kind of looks pretty-ish, but it's not pretty. It's insect damage. Uh, but I've got newer growth on here that does not have it. So I think that, that we've dealt with the problem. I've sprayed it enough. I just now need to maintain. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. When it goes outside, it's going to get uh, another blast with the hose. And occasionally I put it in the sink and I just spray it all over the place. So it is what it is. Cattleya. I have one Cattleya that does really, really well. Uh, and this one is not that one. <laughs> this one is uh, P.O.T. Uh, Barana Angel. So this one, I don't know. I don't know what color it's supposed to be. It's never bloomed. And uh, maybe it has bloomed once. It might be a red pink. I'm not sure. I, I, I really I can't remember the last time. When it goes outside, it does beautifully. It gets some beautiful new growth. This one actually needs to get repotted. Uh, it's slowly, the media is washing away. Uh, maybe outside it gets tipped over and gets watered and, and media comes out. So it, it's just, a, it's just a, a mess in there. But uh, it's just an unruly looking plant. That's probably my care. That's, that's probably not the fault of the plant itself. Um, so, and then this one here, this one needs a good repot. This is the Cattleya that uh, is beautiful. I love this one. This one is so forgiving. It doesn't hate me. 
uh, for whatever reason, uh, we have a good relationship, and it blooms usually twice a year. It uh, blooms in the spring, and then it blooms in the fall. I've got some new growth that's coming out, and that will have uh, spikes coming on them. Uh, where are they? There's, there's not this one. Not this one. Well, this one here is a new growth right here. But uh, it's always putting out new growth, and as you can see, it's getting big and unruly and uh, the roots are coming off the side of the pot so this one really needs to get put into a bigger pot and uh, the pot is actually split so uh, it needs a new home but it's doing it's doing good I like this one it's got a pretty golden flower uh, it's not blooming at the moment uh, a shame but uh, it's it's a nice hearty hearty plant what is this one it's a BLC Lucendo de Oro a bouillon so yeah is that going to come up there? It's not. It's not a bad plant. It's really, really pretty. It comes when it when it opens up. It starts off more yellow and then it goes more gold uh, as it ages. All right. Uh, next one here <laughs> is uh, Stanhopia. Uh, St yeah, Stanhopia uh, nigroviolaceae. So this one here, I thought it was uh, a goner a few years ago, and uh, it it had a lust for life, and it <laughs> it wanted to come back. So it's here, it's here, and it's growing. It did so beautifully over the uh, summertime uh, outside. It started to put out new growth. I really need to repot it. Uh, it needs to go in a pot probably twice as big as what it is, and uh, I think I'm going to plant it in moss, maybe even in a uh, a hanging basket, a wire basket, because I believe that the Stanhopias will shoot out flower spikes that go down rather than up. So it really should be in a hanging basket. So maybe I'll find a smaller, maybe a 10 inch wire basket, uh, or maybe even a, a colander or something. Um, we'll see what I can find. And uh, it should do fine. Let's, let's hope. Uh, it's doing nicely. The new leaves are, are not terrible. It, it needs a little bit more humidity. There's curling in the leaves. But all in all, it's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm glad it's still alive. I really like Stanhopia flowers, uh, but I've never had one bloom for me. Uh, we've done this one. These are the Tolumnias. I've got two of them looking pretty well the same. These guys have dried out so much and they've had scale insect. They look a little moist because they are. I was noticing as I picked them up, they're just sitting over uh, on a tropical shelf, not with other orchids and uh, they just get watered when they're <laughs> severely dry and uh, and yeah I need to be careful because I planted them in moss so uh, uh, talus like to uh, be more on the dry side they actually prefer to be mounted uh, but if you don't if you don't water them correctly uh, they're just gonna dry up and be crispy anyway so um, I am a very lazy waterer so moss helps me out it keeps them a little bit more damp but uh, even if I watered these once a week, they would need it. They dry out pretty quickly. Uh, they're in clay pots and they've got lots of uh, air holes, so they don't stay moist for very long. Uh, so I just let them dry out way too long. But now with the new watering system, with the hose, I go around and I do water these each week now. So uh, now that I'm showing them love, they'll probably die. I don't know. They were looking beautiful. So I've, I've gotten rid of the scale on there, and we'll see how it goes. Fingers crossed! Now we're looking at a few of the bigger ones. Oh, let's look at some death and destruction, shall we? <laughs> Don't look too close. This used to be my beautiful uh, bulldog path. I repotted it because it needed it, and uh, it just went on a steady decline. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I would consider this to be a compost pile thing, but I'll just leave it off to the side. It, it'll go with other things on another shelf and hopefully it, it bounces back. I don't have much hope. Uh, this one used to do beautifully for me. Every year, without fail, I would get a bloom. Uh, this year, I'm not going to get a bloom. And if I do get a bloom spike, I'm going to cut it off because it does not have the energy to sustain anything. Uh, but I don't think we're going to get one. Usually by now, there's a little bit of a, a plumpness at the base of the plant, and I don't feel any plumpness at the base of the plant. Uh, so, yeah, fingers crossed. I'm not holding my breath, but uh, that is that. Told you we're showing it all. <laughs> we're showing everything. So whether it's good, whether it's bad, it is what it is. Um, this one's doing beautifully. I really want to get more flowers from it. This is a uh, Brassia, 
And I love brassia flowers. The spider orchid, I think they're spider orchids. Uh, oh, it's so pretty. So this one, I can barely get the, the thing out. Oh, I wish I could read that. Uh, three sods? I don't know. Is it going to come up on camera? Not sure. It looks like it's not going to come into focus. Anyway, the pseudo bulbs over the years are getting much bigger. Uh, they're probably about four inches tall, and uh, maybe they'll get bigger than that. I hope so. Pseudo bulbs really, I don't know. There's something really special about them. They make me happy, and when they're doing really, really well, uh, yeah, it makes me smile. It makes me feel proud. Um, but when they're not doing well and they're all shriveled up, it just makes you feel sad. Uh, and when uh, some of the bulbophyllums, they, they have uh, really interesting shaped pseudo bulbs. And, and oh, I need to get some, but I, I cannot I cannot water them as much as they like to be watered. <laughs> Bulbophyllums tend to like to be on the moist side all the time, and then I let them dry out, and then they just, oh, it's a bad experience. So eventually I might try them again. We'll see. Eventually, if, if my orchids start to grow better, I will get back into the hobby a little bit more, but I'm going to pay more attention to what I'm growing. I'm not just going to buy, 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 buy. Sound like an NSYNC song. That's NSYNC, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's doing beautifully. I hope that I see a flower spike, like I said. I keep looking in. Tis the season to start seeing Oncidiums produce them. It's either now or in the fall. Um, so, anyway, it, it, it's producing new growth over the summertime, and, and that's what I love. Uh, before we get to the, um, the Psychopsis, we're going to go to this one. This one is an Alicera. We're almost done. We're almost done. Hold it. Hang in there. Uh, Alicera Halo Ablaze. This one here, I bought it years ago. I think I got it on sale because I don't, I didn't really buy a lot of orchids full price because they're so expensive. Um, this one is a beautiful one and it seems to be uh, one of the Oncidiums that, that work for me because it stays more clumpy. It doesn't grow a bulb on top of a bulb on top of a bulb. So, um, yeah, but uh, as you can see, there's some uh, some aerial roots that are that are doing their thing up there. Hopefully, I'll be able to uh, make those happy, and and I really want to see these blooms again. Uh, the pseudo bulbs are longer, and they're they're just really really slender, very similar to the brassi uh, brassia. Um, super super fun. I love this plant. I, I really I, I really am hoping for some uh, from for some spikes. I'm look. I'm not even paying attention to the video. I'm just I'm peering in to see because they come from the little uh, leaf crotches here. So I just really am hopeful that I'll see one, but I don't. Uh, better luck next time, Bill. Better luck next time. I need to start caring for them more regularly so that uh, they get the energy to do what they need to do. But they love going outside. I'm not going to not put my orchids outside from now on. Um, obviously bring them in for the winter. But uh, they really do respond well to, uh, to going outside. This one does not go outside. This one stays upstairs. I have it in, is it the west window? Southwest window. And this is my Cycopsis. This is the last orchid. So you can uh, breathe easy. <laughs> no more. Uh, so this one here, it looks like there's a lot of flower spikes and there is. But uh, two of them, I believe two of them are dead. So this one here and this one here are toast. I should cut them off. They have browned all the way down to the base. Um, but this one here has a little bud that is uh, developing a little flower right now. Uh, when I went to bring this downstairs, this flower was on top and uh, it fell off. It is done. It, it's very off color. But uh, I was hoping to have this come down and, and still have the flower on it. Uh, so I just brought it down as a reference. <laughs> my little samurai plant. I love I love the psychopsis. It's called a butterfly orchid. I believe it's a butterfly orchid. Uh, and then I've got a big... This one will be opening in a couple of days, as you can see. And uh, so I have three good flower spikes there. And then down in the base of the pot... I don't know whether I'm able to angle this right without breaking things along lights and ceiling and whatnot. I have a new... Spike, can you see it by my finger, hand? It's uh, at the palm of my hand. One new flower spike there, and I have another flower spike developing over here. So this Psychopsis, 
Um, it doesn't get much care. It uh, it dries out completely. Uh, it gets it gets good light. Um, it's it's on a table just under the window, so the it gets a, a bright diffused light. There's no uh, shade or anything. There's no uh, no blinds uh, on the window, and uh, yeah, it gets bright indirect light uh, because it's just below the window ledge. Um, but it does beautifully, and uh, again, dries out completely. I don't fertilize it very often. I probably should fertilize it more, um, but it's upstairs, and it just gets water from the tap. Uh, I come and I water all my plants quickly. I have good intentions to fertilize, but uh, the fertilizer is not in that space. So when I think about watering, I don't think about adding fertilizer. So um, it doesn't seem to mind uh, because it's got new flower spikes starting. So I'm going to be back up to five after I remove these other two dead ones. So it does it does nice. This is the one that we repotted a number of years ago, probably five or six years ago, uh, and uh, it sulked for a couple of years, but now it's starting to come back into its own. I'll probably need to repot it again soon because the the growth is actually, oh, it's so dry. <laughs> it's so dry, it's crunchy. Um, uh, the, the growth is actually pushing the side of the pot. So I think that, that soon I should be repotting it. Um, but I, I'm not looking forward to that because it, it sulked for so long. I'll wait until these, these uh, spikes actually develop and start to bloom before I do it because they will probably uh, blast if I, if, I, uh, if I shock it right away. If I do it now. But uh, maybe after this video I'll give it a little blast of uh, fertilizer because now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> so anyway. This was my whole orchid collection, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, and uh, show me what yours are doing. Uh, post to the Plants and Things What's Growing page. I know you guys are really, really fantastic about posting to that. Uh, show us some of your uh, your spring blooms, some things that are, are uh, making you happy for the, the springtime. Uh, some of you are already getting spring weather. Uh, we are uh, just coming out of a, a cold snap with all kinds of snow and ice, so um, it, it's going to be nice to see things starting to pop up out of the ground here very, very soon. It's March now, so uh, it's about time. Uh, anyway, uh, show me what you're growing. Uh, show me your orchids. Uh, show me your regular plants. I, uh, it doesn't really matter. I just, I'm, I'm, uh, I love all uh, green growth. <laughs> as long as it's not covered in insects, I love it. Unless it's a beneficial insect, that's a good thing. So anyway, until next time, you guys, happy growing.